Both funding requests, the budget request and the advanced appropriation requests, allow VA to concentrate on five of our highest priority goals in the coming two years. Reducing homelessness to under 59,000 by June of 2012, a little over a year from now. En route to ending veteran homelessness in 2015. Fully automating GI Bill benefits processing by the end of this year. Standing up a paperless claims processing system by 2012. A bunch of pilots underway, some great uh, uh, potential being demonstrated. We hope to have that automation beginning to fall into place in 2012 uh, to Wally's comments. But not only automation, also providing high quality veteran-centric claims decisions in less than 125 days by 2015 at a high accuracy rate. <clears throat> we also seek to create the next generation of electronic records with DOD, Department of Defense, to finally effect a seamless transition for youngsters leaving active service today, most of them with paper. So as we automate, unless we get DOD and VA together on this electronic transition, we still have paper coming to us, and that's what we have to change. And finally, addressing the increasing needs for mental health care through receptive access. Not just access, receptive access. Reaching out, informing veterans of our services and benefits, and making sure there's no wrong door that they can get in to our, our system. And then high quality treatment outcomes so that veterans early on achieve stability in their lives and go back to productive contributions. Let me just make a few quick points. I'll touch, those are five major goals. I'll touch on a couple of them. Homelessness. The President strongly supports our mission to end veteran homelessness by 2015. We have made major progress. Six years ago, there were about 195,000 homeless veterans on any given night. Today, that estimate, I say estimate, estimate, I learned to be careful about estimates. Uh, but today that estimate is about 76,000. We intend to get that estimate down to 59,000 by June of next year. At the same time, we're building a registry of every known homeless veteran we can identify and make sure that registry has name and face and uh, background so we know what we're dealing with. And it's my push. I've never been able to solve a problem I couldn't see. You know, and a number in a cloud, whatever it is, 130,000, 79,000, um, is not something, it's not a problem I can see. So we're developing a registry so we can reach out, make sure we're doing good. The 2012 budget includes $939 million for specific programs to prevent and reduce homelessness. So when I talk about 75,000 veterans being homeless, getting them off the street is rescue. There's four to five times that number who could be at risk of being homeless. One mortgage payment, one more missed utility, you know, you name it, uh, and, and they could be homeless. We have to fix that problem as well. So as we rescue, we have to prevent. So 2012, we're putting nearly a billion dollars into specific programs to prevent and reduce homelessness amongst veterans. An increase of about 17.5%, $140 million more than we were put in in 2011. A comprehensive review is underway to use VA's inventory of vacant or underutilized buildings that are scattered throughout the country on various campuses vacant or underutilized buildings to house homeless and at-risk veterans and their families. VA has already identified 94 sites which will potentially add another 6,300 units of housing through public-private venture uh, using VA's enhanced use lease authority, specific legislative term, enhanced use lease authority. Here's where we partner with an enterprise that'll come in and develop or refurbish housing for our needs. Our property, we own it, 
they invest in it, and they get paid back over time. This authority is scheduled to lapse at the end of calendar year 2011, the end of this calendar year. And its reauthorization by Congress is needed to continue increasing housing for homeless veterans and families. So we're, we're counting on Congress to help us here. We talked about it uh, last session, and this is the session we have to get this done. Along with enhanced use lease, the most flexible and responsive housing option remains the HUD-VASH voucher with housing and urban development. VASH, VA supportive housing, HUD-VASH, on which we work closely with Secretary uh, Sean Donovan at the Department of Housing and Urban Development. He and I endorse the importance of this joint effort. HUD-VASH vouchers are our only option at the moment for housing veterans with families. Most of the rest of our homeless uh, program are beds in various locations, and it's under those conditions, male veterans who are homeless are the easiest to care for. Female veterans, female veterans with children, veterans with families don't fit that uh, niche uh, quite as well. And so HUD-VASH vouchers allow us to get an apartment, put families, women with children in there. And this is why it's important to us. So that was homelessness. Let me talk about claims backlog in the GI Bill. In 2009, when I first arrived, we produced 977,000 claims decisions. We were feeling pretty good. We got a million claims submitted for the first time. A million. In 2010, for the first time, we produced one million claims decisions received 1.2 million claims for the first time. This year, we're expecting 1.45 million claims to be submitted this year. And we know we're going to produce another record claims decisions and still fall short. So the idea that the inventory of 750,000, whatever the current inventory of uh, claims is the same 750,000 that have been there for a long time. Not quite true. There are some that are tough enough that they carry over, uh, you know, over a year. But the vast majority, with the number of decisions being made, the vast majority of claims are turning over. It's just that with these large numbers coming in, some of it due to the current conflicts, uh, some of it due to the economic situation, uh, where people have lost their health care coverage or uh, lost uh, jobs.